Time to get down to business. All right, I'm going to work out the May, June 2022 computer science paper that I happened to be walking along the street and I saw it on the ground. So I picked it up. All right, so the first thing I notice here is that there is something called a erratum sheet. It's basically, um, this is what is give to the examiners. They, they give this to like the moderators, the examiners to tell them what to change on the um on the paper so question 11 question 4a is supposed to be um three stages in your problem solving process i don't know if they change that on everybody's paper or if some people answered it the wrong way but either way um if you if your question paper didn't have the change more than likely they will give you the six mark but we will see we don't know so let's go and see what we have here First thing, this one I heard gives some people a lot of problems. They were like, what? A SR flip-flop? And everybody was kind of going crazy. Like, what is this? Why would why would they do that to us? Well, yes, folks, a SR flip-flop is on the syllabus. RS flip-flops, SR flip-flops, D flip-flops, and um, JK, I believe. So, a SR flip-flop, this one uses the and NAND gates. So, they'll have two... The RS uses NOR gates, so you have two NAND gates like that, and you have to send uh, input into one here and input into one here. But the input from the other one feeds, is fed from the input here, so it's kind of go like this, and then this one kind of goes like this. Basically, they feed back into each other, and the SR is for set, reset. So you have set reset and then this will be Q and Q prime. You could say O or O prime, but usually usually they use it, they use you they use Q, right? So essentially that's your SR flip up there, that's four marks. How they breaking down that four marks? I'm really not too sure, but um So chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answer to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, don't leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of the answers. I have an app that's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video. It might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It. Go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of what handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written, instead of watching the video, hey, you could do that too. Download the app now. All right, back to the answers. All right, so let's go again. Construct the truth table for the following circuit, which is a combination of basic graduate circuit. Okay, so they have C, D, E, and Z. So let's start with um, A and B. Your possible inputs for A and B will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. That's standard stuff there. Those are always your inputs. Then from there, you're going to get C. C is a result of A going through a NOT gate. So you're taking everything that's inside A and nutting it. So it'll be 1, 1, 0, 0. That'll be the opposite. D is a result of the or uh, oh, this is a or gate so a or b a or b zero or zero is zero zero or one is one one or zero is one one or one is one and then we have the e the e is going to be the result of what you get from c and what you get from d and it's an and so we're going to go one and zero is zero one and one is one zero and one zero zero and one zero and then now the output which will be z is a result of what you get from e or what you get from d so we're going e and d now and we all in this so zero or zero is zero one or one is one one or zero is one, one. all that way that's a lot. We, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, let's double check that. A and B. A is 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so A, um, C is not A, so 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Cool. Then we're checking for the OR of A and B. A or B is. 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, 1 or 1 is 1. Mm -hmm. 
right and then we get the e which is the and of the c and d one and zero is zero one and one is one zero and one is zero zero and one is zero right, cool and then the z now will be a result of the or between e and d zero or zero is zero one or one is one one or zero is one one or zero is one right, cool good wonderful oh shucks this is not a and gate this is a nand ah uh, yeah i make a mistake there that's an and gate okay let's take it back i was not paying attention there yeah so e is an and gate wow i mean some students probably get catch with that too but mm, anyhow let me see all right so there's a and gate so it's a not and so whatever you get from a and you have to do the opposite of it so we're going to do c and d one and zero would be zero so the opposite of that would be a one one and one would be zero so the opposite of that would be uh no one and one would be one so the opposite of that would be a zero zero and one would give you a zero so you get a one zero and one would give you yeah because it's the opposite of a and it's not and right now that we have that we could do the d and the e so zero or one would be one one or zero you're getting all ones yeah i think that's it i saw the error of my ways so let me double check one more time this is so there's me doing the paper without even looking at it right i never i didn't even like go through the questions before so let's go again let's help students I'll make mistakes just like the others. A and B. That's right. So this is the not part. So C is the not A. That, 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 that. Right. Good as not. Cool. I am confident that that part is correct. Good. Then we have to do the D now. The D is the A or B. So A or B. Zero or zero will be zero. Zero or one will be one. One or zero will be one. One or one will be one. Right, good. And now this part is the key one here. This is a NAND gate, not an AND gate, which I just messed up. So the output of E will be basically the opposite of everything that an AND gate would do when you get C and D. So one and zero would be zero. So output for the NAND gate will be one. Yeah, the output for the NAND gate will be one. And then one and one would give you one, but the output for the NAND gate, not AND, would give you zero. Zero or one would give you zero. Zero and one will give you zero, so the output will be one. Zero and one will give you zero, so the output will be one. Cool. Good. And then now we just do the all for the um, E and D. Zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 one. Cool. Yeah, because once you have a one anywhere inside that all gate, you should be good there. All right, so that's six marks. Six marks, yeah. If I were doing the paper, I'd probably don't put make a mistake, as you realize, because people make mistakes. I wonder if any students made a mistake there, right? Anyhow, calculate the hexadecimal value above the binary. So we have the A and the 9. A is um, 10, so that'll be 1, 0, 0. No, 1, 0, 1, 0. 8 and 2, 10, right? Good. And the 9 will be 1, 0, 0, 1. Right, that's the hexadecimal the binary. Yeah, you just have to do the um, the calculations there. All right, assuming that your answer in C part one is two is complement binary number, convert to that decimal. All right, so if we're going from binary to decimal using two's complement, you first have to invert. So we are the one zero one zero one zero zero one invert, which will be zero one zero one zero one one zero, and then you have to add one. So if we add one, we get one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, zero. And now we're gonna convert this to a binary number. No, we can find convert to a decimal number. So this is going to be um one, two, four, not eight, sixteen, not twenty-two, sixty-four. Sixty-four plus sixteen should be eighty. 64, 6, that's 70 plus 10, 80, yeah. 84, 85, 86, 87. I think it's 87 to be 10. Look so. Yep, 
Yeah, 87 look like the number. Let's double check, cause as you'll realize, there are plenty time now. Before in the older, older past, we put under the old syllabus. You really didn't have quite that much time, but because these the questions drop down to 15 marks, you could finish off. Like you could finish the paper without a lot of time to spare. So it's always good to check over, especially when you're doing calculations, and especially if you're a person like me, who or you make makes a lot of careless mistakes. Yeah, you need to pay attention to that. So we have the binary value here. You know the hard part about this is if you get this part here wrong, then you're gonna work out this wrong. That would be real sad to lose the whole five marks because you didn't do the binary correct, but you could have done the two something like that. I hope they give you marks for at least being able to invert on that one. Anyhow, invert one zero zero one zero one uh, blah 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 blah. Right, good. Yep, so we invert everything. We add one. Good. We get all of those things and then we convert this to a decimal value. And we have to check that it's a two's complement binary number, so therefore this would have made it negative. So therefore it's negative 87. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Because if it's a two's complement binary number, we're taking it from two's complement and we're working our way down. Let me see, let me do a quick Google there and see what negative 87 is in two's complement. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm correct. Alright, good. So negative 87 is the answer there, three marks. And we're moving on. Define the term cache memory. Um, cache memory is a high speed storage location that works at the same speed of the CPU essentially. Right? Explain how cache memory increases the efficiency of data retrieval on the CPU. Oh, I think I just explained that. I kind of half explained it anything. Alright, let me see if I could change it around. Alright, cache memory increases the efficiency of the CPU. Okay. Normally, the CPU would have to um, go to the memory to fetch data. But with and that takes long. Alright, I'm gonna explain that. The fetch data and that takes long. However, cache memory works or oh, it takes long because memory because the because of the speed mismatch. Okay, no, let me explain that. They give me plenty lines, so I'm gonna use up all right. That takes long because of the speed mismatch. Cache memory holds the necessary the most necessary instructions instructions and gives the CPU them at a faster speed if they, if they get back to the answer I don't know what to tell you again essentially you are um, essentially what you're saying is you want to make sure that the um, CPU gets the information as fast as possible. That is all. Okay. Name two components of the CPU other than registers. What? Okay. The CU and the ALU. I hope so. So your call list program counter, your call list memory address register, your call list memory buffer register, your call list anything like that. All you could do is CU and ALU. That is all I could think of. Control unit, arithmetic logic unit, registers, memory buffer, register, yeah, everything else is a register. Yeah, so we just over that. See you on ELU. What else they could be asking for there? Nothing else. Take the function of each of the components named in B. Yeah, that's what they're asking for, yeah. You see you controls the inputs and outputs. data within the CPU um, I mean they could also say that the term they could also say that it decodes the upper and the upcode and them kind of thing right the LU does the mathematical calculations 
uh, mathematical calculations necessary to run the to execute the instructions. Um, pretty much. Part C des briefly describe a scenario in which each of the following types of computers could be used, or oh, a supercomputer. Okay. Um, research into gene sequencing because of the large amount of data can process. And then um, describe a scenario in which each of the following computers can be right. so because of the large amount of data it can process. Scenario: Search into gene sequencing. Two. So, okay, I'll, I'll I'll add a little more to it because I think they're looking for a little more. Let's just update this here. Research into gene sequencing to um, create cures from diseases. Yeah, right. Good. That should give them the two marks. A silver. When you should use a silver. Oh. Okay, the best time to use a silver is um, a scenario. Okay, when playing multiplayer online games, the players have to connect to a server to get resources and send and receive commands for the game to move smoothly. Right, school. And then we have now a mobile device. What do I want? A scenario in which each of the following types of computers can be used. A mobile device. Um, whew, there's a lot of writing, but there's like an IT paper. Can be used to communicate with people in remote locations where um, internet connectivity may not yeah where um, wired and in internet yeah right, so basically saying that wired internet connectivity um, is bad so therefore you would use a yeah yeah basically a mobile device there's so many answers you could put here I don't really see a problem with it like that cool. wow that module one was fairly straightforward the only thing in this module one that caused some issues would have been the um, plenty of people wouldn't have known what a SR flip flop is because they probably didn't study it and like me they may have made a mistake with this gate here and, and it's a NAND gate instead of a AND gate and worked it out as a AND gate instead of a NAND gate but other than that the binary calculations was solid all these things here was just basic explanations of stuff like should really have a okay cool Moving on to section two.